Good morning. morning. Well, a special welcome to visitors and guests. Uh, We pray that the joy of Christ will fill you as we worship today. Uh, There are friendship pads in each each pew. It's near the center aisle. If you would please fill those out, send it down and back again. It's appreciated. Uh, Today's KDIO radio broadcast is sponsored in memory of Jim Johnson's birthday on February uh, 17th, this last Friday, from Sharon and family. Uh, Way to go for the Super Bowl of Caring. Uh, Thanks for your generosity. $254.48 was donated to the food shelf. So thank you to all who participated in that. Uh, We have several um, volunteer opportunities. Uh, One is to organize volunteers to prepare and serve uh, coffee Sunday mornings. And another is to be the Sunday morning volunteer. So please let Christy, is she over here, over there in the corner, or the office know if you're interested in either one of those. Um, And then there is another uh, uh, volunteer opportunity to be a caring friend. So a caring friend is someone who visits someone who is looking for someone to visit with. So the nurses are having an information meeting after the service day downstairs in the coffee area. Is that right, Renette? Um, So if you're interested, please um, come and see them today. Uh, This Wednesday Wednesday is... um, Ash Wednesday, Lent begins, and God willing, we will have a service. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, There's going to be midweek Lenten services, both here at First English Lutheran in the evening, and then also um, up at Fairway View at uh, 1.30. And Fairway View will be focusing on the Beatitudes, and we're going to have a different service here um, through the month of March. It's going to be like a radio, um, radio type host and uh, interviewee of one of the main characters in that last week of uh, Jesus' life before the crucifixion. Uh, so both Ash Wednesday services, though, providing we can have it, uh, will include ashing with the sign of the cross on your forehead and um, Holy Communion. Well, thanks to today's lecture, Marilyn Hansen. And is there anything else that we should bring up this morning? All right, please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with those around you. Continue with the litany. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated as we sing, Come to the Water of Life.
The reading can be found beginning on page 55 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. At Mount Sinai, Moses experienced the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. The glory of the Lord settled on the mountain, and on the seventh day, God called out to Moses. On the mountain, God gave Moses the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. A reading from Exodus, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountains of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and Hur said, Wait here for, for us. Whatever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. The reading can be found on page 185 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. At the transfiguration, God's voice was heard, declaring Jesus to be the beloved Son. By the activity of the Holy Spirit, God's voice continues to be heard throughout the word of the scripture. A reading from 2 Peter, the first chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we were made known to you the power in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitness of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased." We ourselves heard the voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy or script of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. I invite the children forward for a children's message. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for answering. Well, we're going to go on a journey up a mountain, and it's full of surprises. And every time I say, oh, no, you can say it, too, because that's when there's a surprise in the story. 
right? So climbing higher, higher, higher. Oh no. Oh no. What's that? It's so bright. I see gold and silver everywhere. Oh no. Oh no. I can't see Jesus. It's too bright. But he was here. I saw him standing here. Oh no. Oh no. It's so bright. I can hardly see. I think that's Jesus shining with light. And who is that? Oh no. Oh no. Jesus' friends, Moses and Elijah, shining bright like a golden sun. But wait. Oh no. Oh no. The light has gone. It seems dark. Where is everyone? Is that Jesus? Oh no. He's no longer shining. He's back to normal. What a strange thing. What can I say? Oh no. Oh, no. I don't have the words. I don't have an explanation. I don't know what happened. It was a mystery. Will we ever understand? Oh no. Oh, no. It's time to go back down the hill back to normal, but I don't want to leave. I don't want to forget. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything is just as we left it, except now I know Jesus is special. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, let's pray. Oh, Lord, you are mystery. You are glory. Thank you for being you. Amen. All right, let's make the sign of the cross. God in my head, God in my heart, God on my left, and God on my right. All right, thank you. Thanks for coming up. Our senior choir is singing, He Sent His Son.
Thank you, choir. Please stand as we welcome the gospel. Our gospel for Transfiguration Sunday is found in St. Matthew chapter 17, beginning with the first verse. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, And from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace, beloved, from the glory of God shown in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Jesus took his executive committee uh, up the mountain from uh, with him for a leadership retreat. Peter, James, and John are going away for further exp- a fuller explanation of what Jesus had just told the whole council. If you want to become my followers, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. I'm quite sure they were looking forward to find out what Jesus really meant. Well, instead, this inner circle of Jesus' followers are confronted with mystery and glory and awe. God comes again in a cloud. The great leader Moses, who met God's fiery glory in a cloud upon a mountain, and now Peter, James, and John were enveloped by a cloud where God promised the brilliantly dazzling Jesus as God's beloved son. Well, God gave us the same message from within a cloud at Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River where he was baptized with water. Soon, Jesus will be baptized with crucifixion, cruelty, and death. Well, today... Jesus' divinity is shown. This Wednesday, we begin the uh, Lenten journey where Jesus' humanity is shown as we travel with him to another mountain, Mount Calvary, where Jesus is crucified. But today, we focus on Jesus' glory. Well, the blinding light we see today is the glory of God radiated outward from the face of Jesus. But the problem with blinding light is that we can't see clearly. It's overwhelming. We can't see the whole picture. And it wasn't until after the cross and Jesus' resurrection that the picture of Jesus, the divine and human, the Son and Savior, comes into focus. Well, along with the disciples, We have been learning who this Jesus is, revealed bit by bit. We began with his birth to Mary, who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Her fiancé Joseph, told by an angel not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife, was to name her son Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. While wise ones traveled from another country to follow the star that led to the home of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus to see the King of the Jews. To escape the massacre commanded by Herod of those children two years old and younger, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus escaped to Egypt. 
And when it was safe, they came back and settled in Nazareth. Well, we heard God proclaiming who Jesus was at his baptism, his beloved son, when the Spirit descended upon Jesus. We've heard Jesus' sermons and his concern for the poor, widows, orphans, and the oppressed. We've heard his proclamation that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Well, today we see him with Moses, the giver of the law, and Elijah, the great prophet. After learning all these things, today we see the full glory and divinity of Jesus, God's beloved son, the mountaintop experience. Well, the disciples were living in a time of confusing events, divisive rhetoric, increased tension, and an unclear picture of the future. Some were in dread of what was happening, and some found it exciting. Does this sound familiar? It is into this unsettled world that God proclaimed to the disciples and us, listen to him. Well, listen to what? Jesus isn't even talking. He's shining. Well, as good Lutherans would ask, what does this mean? Well, David Lowe's uh, calls this instruction, command, and promise. We are instructed to listen to him. As a community of faith, the best way to understand God is to look to Jesus and listen to him. We pay attention to what Jesus says and does, to whom Jesus reaches out to, to those Jesus gives attention and help. Well, Jesus commands us to get up. The Greek word here is the same one that the angels declared to the women at the empty tomb. He is not here. He has been raised. You could even say resurrected. So remember that God's command also carries the power to fulfill that command. In Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. When Jesus says, get up, his words give us the energy and the will to act, to be about the works of mercy and compassion that God calls us to, to follow Jesus in his ministry of healing and reconciliation. Well, the promise given by Jesus is, do not be afraid. These words, were, uh, the, uh, these words were words that the disciples up on the mountaintop needed to hear. Well, these are words that we need to hear in every time and place. Well, Jesus is much more than the disciples then and now expect or understand or imagine. But we do know that Jesus is power and glory. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is the one, as Erica Gibson Evan writes, that bends down to us as we lie flat on our faces in fear, touches us, and tells us to get up and not be afraid. Well, Jesus is the one That goes all the way to the cross. Jesus is the one that asks us to look honestly at sin and death, to look honestly, but to not be afraid. God tells us to listen to him. Listen to his promises, even when we are in the depths. Listen to Jesus when we are overwhelmed by light or circumstance. Listen to Jesus when you don't know which way to turn. Listen to Jesus when he says, be raised up. Well, here is the good news for you today. No matter what you fear, fear of aging or of having a dread disease, fear of unexpected death or death of a relationship, economic fears or fear of the future, here is your promise Your hope and your gospel message, do not be afraid. No matter our fears, 
We have the promise that God is the God of the past, the present, and the future. Emmanuel, God with us, is a promise and a reason to not fear. God did not create us for death, but for resurrection. God wants you to not be afraid, but to move forward with courage and confidence. Follow Jesus down the mountain to our daily reality. Jesus gives us hope and encouragement for the journey to the cross. God is with us every step of the way. God has always been with God's people. God was with the Israelites through the stories of clouds and voices through family dramas, including persistent infertility, through armed enemies and even depression. God was also there through life-giving and life-giving, or life-saving and life-giving strangers, miraculous births, food in the wilderness, and surprising, as Barbara Brown Taylor describes it, drop to your knees, love. While Jesus' divine majesty, once his dazzling appearance fades, is hidden in weakness, suffering, and death. It is here that God's greatest glory is shown. It is here that the fullness of God's love is poured out. So remember Jesus' glory on the mountaintop and in the resurrection. God's presence is stronger than our fear. And that's a promise. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the creed as written. We believe in an innovative God who does not wait for us to find ourselves, but comes seeking the lost and calling us into a new way. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit to become both in creed and deed the children of the living God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to respect and support one another through joys and tribulations, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing the refrain, There is a longing in our hearts uh, before the prayers of the people and at its conclusion. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love, we only find in you, our God. Call together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer petition ends with merciful God, and your response is receive our prayer. Holy One, embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation, from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. 
bless the work of conservation organizations, and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all in authority, our mayor and local leaders, our governor and state legislatures, our president and national legislatures. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. We especially lift up Ricky, Carol, Ken, Arlen, Barb and Roger, Gail, Harris, Erlise, Brandy, Mick, Paul, Baby Rosie, Larry, Natalie, Baby McCoy, Zane, Brian, Janice, Jerry, and Terry, at Fairway View Neighborhoods, Swede and Janet, Ruth, Jim, and Eleanor, all our military who are deployed to areas of conflict, and those that we hold dear in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice and the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our our forebears, forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. At this time, we ask the ushers to gather and present the offering as we sing People of Hope.
then Becky has a few words to say. Hi, I'm here on behalf of, I'm the treasurer of the church on behalf of the stewardship board, just to kind of give you an update from when we had our annual meeting. And I want to talk about consistent giving. So we're going to talk about what we just took, the offering. When we had our annual meeting, one of the items we discussed at length was the shortfall that we have in our weekly offerings. Last year, we averaged a shortfall of between $1,000 and $1,500 per week. That equated to over $70,000 that we needed to take from our reserves. Luckily, we have some reserves. But at that rate, we would deplete them in just over three years. And that would include the funds that we've set aside in case we would have to repurchase a parsonage. So at the annual meeting, we were asked, well, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to address this shortfall? Well, as a board, we did tighten the budget as much as we could. We also reduced our benevolence giving to to the synod and to others so that we keep more money at home. But the next avenue to address this shortfall is up to all of us. Aren't we conditioned that the offering plate is the way to give to the church? After all, doesn't it feel strange to let it just pass by and not put anything in it? What does that person next to us think? And then if you only give when the plate is passed, what happens when the days that you're not here? Do you make up the shortfall next week? We are asking as a board to review how people give to the church. We need consistent giving to keep our church running smoothly. We are asking you to consider uh, consider utilizing automatic giving so our offerings are more consistent. And there's five options to consider. Number one, do you know you can go to your bank and you can request a monthly or regular weekly transfer to the church's account? I know people sitting right here now that do that, and it's completely free. And it happens weekly, monthly, you decide. You decide the amount. You can also do online banking. If you do online banking, you can set up an automatic payment to the church. Depending on how your bank works, it could be a check or it could be an automatic clearinghouse transfer. You've seen those things. They say ACH. That could go directly to the church, and that is typically free. And now we have just arranged to have forms for you to utilize. If you don't want to use those avenues, we have forms for you to fill out here at the church to initiate the transfer from your bank to the church's account. You decide how much, you fill out the form, our bank will withdraw the authorized amount from your account each month, and the the transactions do cost 25 cents each, but the consistency is worth it. Several parishioners use the Vanco or the Simply Giving program, which is an online giving tool. It's really the only thing, you know, it's what we were first introduced to. And it does work fine, but it is much more expensive than the other options that I just shared with you. It costs 2.9% and 39 cents per transaction. That is money that the church doesn't get. And the last thing is for anyone who is 70 and a half or older, and has an IRA, you can give directly from your IRA to the church. Remember when you take money out of your IRA, you typically have to pay tax. It's considered income. But if it goes directly from the church, from your IRA, the custodian, to the church, it is completely free. You don't get taxed on it. It's called a qualified charitable distribution. The recent increase in the standard Um, deduction has created much more difficulty in itemizing. So a lot of people that give to the church now don't get to deduct it. But if you are a 70 and a half and you have an IRA, it is a great way to give to the church. So for the next couple weeks, the stewardship board is going to have a table downstairs where you can come and ask questions. You can use that form if you need to, to help accomplish possibly accomplish one of these strategies. Please stop and at least visit with us or feel free to contact one of us individually. All that being said, the offering plate will still be passed at each service. 
After all, we can always give more. And we do have guests. And you will definitely get over feeling guilty because you give automatically. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Let's pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Well, saying wade in the water. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Well, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Water of life, water of birth, water of healing, thanks be to God. We praise you, O God, for waters that gather and name us. We thank you, O God, for waters that wash and claim us. We honor your baptism, a river of blessing bright as crystal. Bless the waters of this place, Big Stone Lake, the Minnesota and Whetstone Rivers. We praise you for Jesus, our Savior. By his cross, our tree of life, you are rooting us in mercy. By baptism into his death and life, you are calling us together, refreshing us for the work of your kingdom. Bless the saints who have gone before us newborn servants of the crucified one. 
Bless the rivers of their stories, embodying the word for us, enlivening our faith. Water of death and destruction, renew us. Water of hope, reborn, stir us to act. Blessing, honor, and glory be to the Lamb, alive and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing, Remembering the Promise. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. So, people of God, go in peace with Christ beside you. Okay, we will. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we sing, Send Us Out.
enter into the song of thanksgiving and freedom. Let us enter into the long line of people in need. Let us enter into the strong mind that God is still living, healing, forgiving. Let us enter in. Let us enter into the place where our God has preceded. Let us enter into the faith.